Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Do you folks like explorers? Because this explorer is sick. Is your Thunder Horse feeling under the weather? Then we've got the product for you. Just give it a can of kick ass. Yay! Oh, wait, it's too fast. All right, fine, we'll take some back. <laughs> just right. This is one of the most beautiful explorers that Gibson has made. And it is a signature guitar for a guy named Brendan Small. This is the Thunder Horse Explorer. Now, Brendan Small, if you don't know, I guess he created the show Metalocalypse or helped create it. I don't really know a lot about the show. I just know there's some really interesting music that comes out of that. It's a show that's on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. It's called Metalocalypse. It was basically started to be a parody of metal bands, but then they accidentally started writing better music than actual bands. Brendan actually has four different signature guitars. He's got two Thunder Horses and two Snow Falcons. One of them is the Gibson variant, and then they have the Epiphone variants now. In the show Squeezegar, he's the one that uses the Thunder Horse Explorer that looks just like this. It even has the Gibson branding on it. And the other character, Toki, uses the White Falcon, which is a really cool flying V. If you haven't checked out the fictitious band Death Clock, I suggest the Duncan Hills coffee jingle, Crush My Battle Opponent's Balls, the Death Theme, and of course, Thunder Horse. So since I've never really watched the show, you're probably curious of how I even know of this guy or why I really love this guitar. Well, Thunder Horse was in Guitar Hero 2, and that's where I first found that song. And until I got this guitar, I didn't actually learn that song. There's the one main bit that I could play, but everything else when I initially tried learning that song years ago was just a little bit too advanced. So I practiced up, I did a fake cover, you'll see that later. It's far from perfect, but hey, you gotta play Thunder Horse on the Thunder Horse Explorer. Even if you don't normally play metal stuff, I highly suggest learning it because there is a lot of really good finger building exercises in that song. There's a few sweet picking parts that I can't do yet, but there's things like the spider crawl lick, which is just really good for building speed because it switches between this pattern and this pattern as you're going up. Now, Brendan doesn't actually play it that way, but that's how I just learned from a wrong tab years ago. So definitely try to learn it if you haven't already. All right, so the guitar itself, the only thing that really makes it special is the binding on the body that you don't typically see on an Explorer, as well as the binding on the neck. It features the same mahogany body. There's no maple cap to it or anything that I'm aware of. Slim 60s mahogany neck, and I'm gonna call this an ebony fretboard. I'm guessing this is the same kind of situation as with the Buckethead Les Pauls, where Gibson had to update their site to say it has rich light, even though the bulk majority of them probably have ebony. There's no way that this fretboard is not ebony. I mean, there's wood grain into it, and there's also little red streaks in it. That is definitely ebony in my book. But the official website will say rich light. You have a Burst Bucker 1 and 2, and your tunematic bridge and tailpiece with the silver burst gloss finish. I mean, this guitar is just visually striking. Even if you don't know who Brendan Small, Death Clock, or Metalocalypse is, you're likely going to look at this guitar thinking, that is a sweet looking explorer. And that seems to be a very common theme with artist signature guitars with explorers and Vs. They all just look fantastic. I mean, take a look at the Bill Kelly, her Golden Axe, the Lizzie Hale Black and White Explorers now. Even the Grace Potter Flying V is pretty cool. These were limited to 400, so the price is only gonna keep going up on these. They're kind of sitting around that $2,500 mark right now. And the only thing that keeps these prices in check is because they did the Epiphone models of these guitars, so they're not quite as limited. 
In fact, the Epiphone model, I can't remember if this is the Snow Falcon or the Explorer, but it actually has coil tapping abilities, and I believe those also have USA Gibson pickups in them too. So in many ways, they might actually be seen as superior. It would be interesting if Epiphone would do a Buckethead model. Maybe that would knock those prices on those behemoths down. So now that we've learned a little bit about this Explorer, let's go ahead and hear my attempt at covering Thunder Horse and other Death Clock stuff. <laughs> Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This guitar is kind of in played shape, and being an explorer, it's very prone to light nicks and dings just because the way you hold these things, they always ding into other stuff. So you've got a ding right here and other scratches on the face of the headstock. 
and some light wear around the edges as well. The truss rod still works the way it should. You still have the original nut and the frets are in great shape. Again, I'm calling this an ebony fretboard. I just cleaned and oiled it. It's looking great. And I just put a fresh set of tens on here because that top E string broke, but I was gonna put new strings on it anyway, so no big deal. I know in my playing demo, it might have helped if I would have like 13 gauge instead of 10 gauge because 10 gauge isn't really meant for playing the drop C's, but hey, that's how it goes. The face of the guitar, it's got some light scratches, but there's something even more major that we need to go over. The first one is right here. Once again, it banged into something and you've got a pretty noticeable ding. But the next thing, there is a lot of finish checking on this model and on a lot of these guitars. Now the person who sold this guitar to me, he knew darn well it was there and he chose not to disclose it, which made me really upset. But you have a finish check line running down from here, from here, all by the pots. You have it by right here as well. And what that is, is it is stress checking. Don't let anybody tell you that this happened naturally from weather checking. This is what happens when a guitar gets dropped. It's been a while since I've been in science class, but I guess the law of motion is an object in motion wants to stay in motion. So when something drops and it stops, this stuff is still moving and this finish is very fragile and that's what causes those finish checking lines that you're seeing. It basically just cracks the finish. Sometimes that means the wood is cracked underneath, but that's not the case in this one. But I see this on so many of these Thunder Horse Explorers. It's almost like they didn't quite get the finish right on these. Or there was a batch of these guitars that was just dropped sometime at Gibson or as they were moving to their dealers. But there's no actual physical damage to this guitar anywhere. So my best guess is like it was dropped in the case. I mean, we're not talking like whoop, falling off a building type of drop. We're just talking a, well, it's in the case. You just drop it down because, oh, I'm here at my gig. I mean, it's nothing major, but you do need to know that it's there because you might not want this example if you're just buying it for the collectible reason. This is definitely more of a player's great example. You've got some scratches on the pick guard, but everything is stock on this guitar. But the last thing to say about those finish checkings, once you start playing this guitar, you don't even notice it. But when you're just admiring its beauty from like this angle or something, that's when you'll notice it. Back of the headstock, serial number 10141555, made in USA, 2011. You've got some very light marks right here on the neck, but for the most part, it's a clean 60s neck profile. Very comfortable to play. It's got a little bit more roundedness to it than most 60s necks, so it does make it comfortable to play. The back of the guitar, it does have some very light buckle worming marks, but for the most part, it's not in too bad of shape. The electronics in here are all original. So we'll take a look at the sides here. Kind of a similar story. You've got some scratches, some finish checking lines where the binding ends and the body truly begins. But I mean, for the most part, this guitar isn't in too bad of shape. It will definitely make for a good player that you don't necessarily have to be too scared to gig because it already has a few minor imperfections. This one has definitely been stored out of the sunlight and probably in its case most of its life. It doesn't glow a lot, but it's got a little bit of a glow to it. Everything is looking good. Face, sides, as well as on the back. So there's nothing really to worry about on this example. Take a look at the neck. It glows a little bit more. You can see right here where it's probably on a stand for some period of time. It's kind of stand rashed the finish a bit, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs on this one, which is what this test is for. So we are in the clear. This guitar does retain its original Gibson USA case. I hate Explorer cases. They're just so large and rectangular. But that's kind of what you have to live with to have one of these. 
So you've got three latches on the front and a functioning handle and just light scuffs pretty much all over the case. The interior is a nice white plush material and it still has that new vanilla smell to it. And you've got some of the original paperwork here. These weren't issued with a COA or anything though. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Thunder Horse, check out the description and click on the link that will take you to the reverb ad. Thank you Trial Dice for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.